Hostiles, 12 o'clock and 6 miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond. Isn't the Lambda site off-world, sir? I'd like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no sensors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. I have quite a few images to show you guys tonight, and it was tough to try to figure out which one to show you first. Now, those of you that like to argue that what I'm seeing is pareidolia, apophenia, or just the product of a very overactive imagination, perhaps you'd like to argue with some Navy pilots as well. I'm sure many of you are aware of the recent disclosure that Navy pilots have had these tangles with things they've described as tic-tac craft. Now, just describing that alone in the era that I was in, would have lost you your security clearance right off the top. And those pilots have to have them. So it's not surprising to me that it's taken this long for this to come out. Now, this particular picture is a little bit out of uh, scale with how big these things are, and I would like to show you the official statement from the pilots and then show you what I found on the ice clear as a bell in Antarctica in not one, not two, but three separate locations. Okay, this is the wiki for the USS Nimitz UFO incident, pardon me. Alrighty, we're going to jump down to visual sighting. When the same event, speaking of this uh, group of contacts that appeared on radar, occurred again around 9.30 Pacific Standard Time on 14 November 2004. An operations officer aboard Princeton contacted two airborne U.S. Navy Boeing FA-18EF Super Hornets from USS Nimitz flying a combat exercise at the time. The aircraft were two-seat variants, and each pilot was accompanied by a weapon system officer. So we had a grand total of four officers that were witness to this. Now... Princeton's radio operator, Kevin Day, directly instructed the pilots to change their course and investigate the unidentified radar spot observed by Princeton's own radar. They had been observing this for a matter of days, not just on the Princeton, but on other craft as well and from the air. This was done to determine 
if the objects posed any collision danger to an upcoming air defense exercise. A radio operator on Princeton, however, asked the pilots if they were carrying operational weapons, to which the pilots replied that they were not, and that's normal procedure. Weather conditions that day showed excellent visibility with a blue sky, no cloud cover, and a calm sea. When the jet fighters arrived on site, the crew of four saw nothing in the air nor on their radar. On Princeton's radar, however, it was noticed that the object had now dropped from 28,000 feet to near sea level in less than a second. As the pilots looked down at the sea, they noticed a turbulent oval area of churning water with foam and frothy waves, the size of a Boeing 737, with a smoother area of lighter color at the center, as if the waves were breaking over something just under the surface. A few seconds later, they noticed an unusual object hovering with erratic movements about 50 feet above the churning water. Both Fravor and Slate, two of the pilots, later described the object as a large, bright white tic-tac, 30 to 46 feet, that's 9 to 14 meters, with no windshield, porthole, wing or impenage, and no visible engine or exhaust plume. Okay, so now we have a description of the shape and the size. Now, without any further delay, we're going to go to Antarctica. And about, oh, a month or so ago, I went through and outlined and showed where there are areas in the Helma Front, Princess Martha Coast, and Coatsland Ranges, also the Haskert Highlands, where there are some very, very high-resolution images that you can look through for yourself. Now, let me show you what I found over here in one of the high-res regions. Laying right on the ice. As you can see, it is very bright white. It is the shape of a tic-tac. And let's go ahead and measure. I'll bring this down here so everyone can see it. Measuring in feet. About 56 feet long in meters. 17. So this is a little bit larger than what they described, but they're also describing a craft flying outside of theirs at quite a distance that can move from 28,000 feet to sea level in about a second. So that they could have been off by a few feet? Probably not uh, out of the realm of possibility. Now, here's one location. What will absolutely blow your mind about this one, though, and I'm going to go ahead and show this first, is once again, historical imagery will absolutely reveal something beyond belief here. This is the image, February 28th, 2012. Now, here, the satellite clearly took a picture at night. Yet, what do we see? For some strange region, reason, pardon me, in this region, there is a giant, glowing, white, unknown thing that looks very much like a Tic Tac craft. Everything else is completely darkened out. And once ahead, pardon me, once again, I'll go back to where we were. Here is 1127, 2012. Pardon me, 1127. 2011. Here is February 28, 2012. Now, strangely enough, it does seem to move just slightly from here to here. But why everything else in the region would be totally dark is beyond me. And if you look very closely, there is some light in the upper regions. I'm not sure what this is from, but it seems like if the light was going right through the mountain here. 
as if this was maybe some kind of a base, some type of a hiding spot right through here. But this is just one location. Let me show you another. Completely different part and in a completely different region. This is from March 15th, 2004. Now you would think, well, that's just a pool of water on the ice. It's a very strange shape for a pool of water. Usually water pools in more of a round shape, and you can see some kind of a, a leading um, stream to it, or river. This one doesn't seem to have one. Let's go ahead and measure this. I guess we'll start in meters this time. About 15 meters. Or in feet, about 50 feet. Once again, right where the pilot said the size would be. So this is location two. Now I'll take you to location three. And this is way inland. This is one of the discoveries I made in an area, what they call inside the circle. Now this one I kind of left be because it wasn't overly definitive, but it is now given that the other two have shown that they match the description perfectly. It just seems like an area that's incredibly bright in relation to everything else around it, but strangely enough, in the shape of a Tic Tac craft and once again, we'll measure. This one is a little larger. This one is about 60 feet. Or about 19 meters. But still, in that same region. So we have three locations. Exact same shape, exact same color. Roughly the same size, within about 5 to 10 percent. And we have the Navy confirming this. That this is exactly what they saw. At this point, if there was this kind of evidence on another planet for a craft, there would be press conferences everywhere if this was Mars or if this was Venus. But of course, because it's Antarctica, nobody wants to talk about it. And that's the real story here. We have people talking about making announcements soon about something on Mars, blah, 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 who cares? I mean, talk about the epitome of hubris. We haven't even explored the oceans of our planet. We have an entire continent, an entire continent that most of the advanced cultures of the world can't even visit six months out of the year. We should be developing technology to do that instead of chasing ghosts on places that are six months away by high-speed spacecraft. Now, this was just one of three things that I wanted to cover, and I can't believe I'm already 11 minutes. And I think I'm actually going to save them because they're that big. The other two discoveries I found are every bit as important as this. And I'll give you a hint. One of them's a buried sphinx that I've measured. That is exactly the measurements of the sphinx in Egypt. And the sphinx in Egypt, by the way, was buried for most of its life. And I believe they made a mistake in the imagery that they uncovered something they weren't supposed to. They uncovered a craft of some kind that was burrowing underneath the ice and surfaced, and you can actually see beings stepping out of it. And I'll show that in contrast to what human beings look like in known locations in what we would call the civilized world, and then you can look at those. But once again, you can argue with me about the dragons and about all the animal sculpture all you want. But I really don't think you're going to argue that these pilots didn't see what they saw. Like, share, subscribe.
would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no censors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. Would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. Some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond, Kane. 